This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol. And men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Now that Cassie's gone to Venus for a month, I suppose you miss her around the house. Oh, we've managed very well without her. You certainly prepared a wonderful dinner. Katie did it all. Is she your housekeeper? Yes, oh, I'll ask her to come in. Well, ask her. I have. Good evening, Professor. You wanted the Colonel to see me? Yes. May I go now? Oh, I've another instruction for you. I will do as you command. What was all that about? I was giving her an order telepathically. Telepathically? Yes, it's my latest invention. A robot that can receive my brain impulses. If I want to tell Katie I'll be home for dinner at 7, I just think about it and she picks up the message. I can't believe it. You just saw it for yourself. I just asked her to bring in some meringue, and here she comes now. Is there anything else you want? No, thanks. You may go back to the kitchen. Fantastic. Could you make me a robot that would obey my thoughts? Sure, but before I set to work, I must record your brain impulses. Why? So that the robot's receiving set is tuned into them. Does that mean a trip to your lab? Right, first time. Then, what are we waiting for? I've been looking for someone like Katie all my life. Would you like a piece of sausage? No, thanks. I've just had lunch. If you do not cease eating, you will become too obese to remain in Space Patrol. Don't be nonsensical. You mean nonsensical. Whatever I mean, you're talking rubbish. Will you two stop arguing? Seems we've been on leave too long. I'll go and see if Rayburn has a job for us. So this is my robot? Yes, and I've called her Lizzie. Can she cook? If you buy her a Radio Impulse cookbook, she can make anything. Wonderful. I'll certainly keep Lizzie busy. <laughs> That's an even better name for her. Busy Lizzie. <laughs> now then, think of something for her to do. I hope she obeys my order. Sure, no, she will. Hello, Dart. Good afternoon, Colonel. I just saw an unusual robot in the corridor. Ah, that was my busy Lizzie. She's tuned into my brain, and I can give her orders telepathically. Oh, really? What did you tell her to do? Water my plants. Take a look outside. It works. Will she obey your message wherever she is? I've tested her up to a distance of 20 miles. How about seeing if she works further than that? Let me take her up in the Gallosphere. A good idea. If a robot will obey our thought impulses from a great distance, we'll be able to use them in space. Prepare for takeoff. I'll collect Busy Lizzie. There's no need. I'll give her the order. This should be an interesting experiment. It doesn't look as if the robot's obeying the colonel. You're wrong. Takeoff program starting now. far enough from Earth for Rayburn to start the experiment. Switch on the screen. There's no need. Busy Lizzie will obey the Colonel without seeing him. What shall I tell the robot to do? It isn't like you to be asking for advice. <gasps> I'm a bit woolly-headed at the moment. I think I've got some virus. Now, uh, what order shall I give the robot? Uh, let me see. Get away! 
Leave me alone. <laughs> Galasphere 347 calling space headquarters. What's my robot doing? Trying to kiss Husky. <laughs> so she can obey my thoughts from a great distance. Excellent. Shall we return to Earth? No. You were due to go back on duty, so I'd like you to orbit Mercury. Shall we bring Busy Lizzie back first? No. I'd order her to lie down in the observation cabin. Shall we go into the freezer? We might as well. It's a three-day flight. Gallosphere 347 calling central control. We're going into the freezer. If an emergency arises, use your Zergon ray to switch off our time control. Message received and noted. Professor Zephyr is calling you from the Martian Observatory. Put him on. I have been working with my new telescope, and I have seen a planet closer to the sun than Mercury. Another planet? Yes, Colonel. I'll get it investigated at once. Marla, where's Gallosphere 347? It is nearing Mercury. Use the Zergon ray to switch off their time control. I want to talk to Dart. <coughs> <coughs> Are you ill? I think I've got a temperature. Please allow me to converse with Captain Dart, and you go home to bed. All right. You know what to tell him? Yes, Colonel. controls off. I'll check if we're near Mercury. I wonder if I've time for a snack. What do you want us to do when we've located this new planet? Orbit it and see if it is safe to land. Very well. And don't forget to wish the Colonel better. Switch on your scanner viewer, Husky. According to Professor Zephyr, there's another planet beyond Mercury. <laughs> It is strange that Colonel Rayburn does not answer my call. I will go and see him. Oh, oh my head. It feels on fire. Where's busy Lizzie? I want her to look after me. Oh, come back. Colonel, are you ill? Who are you? I am Marla, your Venusian secretary. I don't know you. Oh. Leave me alone. I want to go fishing. Where's busy Lizzie? Come back. Come back. <coughs> Lizzie, come back. I want you to come fishing with me. This is calamitous. I must call a doctor immediately. <coughs> The new planet is on the scanner. The robot is not functioning correctly. Maybe it's because Rayburn is ill. We're getting close to the planet. Cut speed, Slim. I... That's odd. I... I feel dizzy. Me too. The last time that happened, it was because the Neptunians were trying to hypnotize us. Maybe they're in control of this planet. We must switch on the electromagnetic field. That will stop any thoughts getting through to us. I'll try and... I will do it. Where's my robot? 
It is distressing to see the Colonel so ill. This injection will calm him down. When he wakes up again, he should be better. Thank you, Doctor. Now, if you will excuse me, I must contact Captain Dart. Base headquarters calling Larry Dart. There is no reply. I want the radio room. It is urgent. Where is Gallosphere 347? It is approaching the new planet. I cannot understand why Captain Dart is not answering me. will obey you. You must both see that the atmosphere is maintained at the correct moisture level. I will, I obey. will obey. Strange. I don't remember coming to bed. Marla. I'm fine now. How long have I been ill? Three days. What's been happening? Galosphere 347 has landed on the new planet. What's it like there? We do not know. Captain Dart is not answering our signals. I don't like the sound of that. I'm coming into the office. I wish to speak to Colonel Rabin. He is not here yet. What is the message? We are receiving sonar beam signals from the new planet. Is it Captain Dart? It is the Neptunians. The Colonel has just arrived. I will tell him. The Neptunians? Yes, they are on the sonar beam now. I'll speak to them. It is a pleasure to talk to you again, Colonel. I wanted to tell you that we have taken over this planet. What was wrong with Neptune? Where's the crew of Gallosphere 347? They are my slaves. If you don't release them, we'll expel you from the United Galactic Organization. <laughs> that does not worry me at all. I only wanted to let you know what had happened to your men. I can't understand why Dart allowed himself to be hypnotized. I'm going to see Professor Haggerty. You're looking as sour as an unripe lemon. The Neptunians have taken over the new planet, and they hypnotized Dart into landing there. Mm, he must have been daydreaming. When the Neptunians start hypnotizing you, you feel dizzy. I know, and I can't understand why he didn't switch on the electromagnetic field. I wonder what went wrong. Ask Busy Lizzie. The Neptunians don't like robots, and I'm sure they've left her alone. That's a good idea. Order her to switch on the video screen. Then you can talk to her and I can hear at the same time. Nothing's happening. Keep thinking, Colonel. Liz is a long way from you. 
What's happened to Dart and his men? They were hypnotized by the Neptunians. Why didn't they switch on their magnetic field? Dart and Husky were hypnotized too quickly. What about Slim? He tried to do so, but I stopped him. Whatever for? You told me to. You kept giving me orders to go fishing and to fight. Hmm. Must have been when I had that temperature. Seems as though the whole thing was your fault. If we could get Dart and his men back into the galosphere, we could tell Lizzie to switch on the electromagnetic field. Once it was on, Dart and his men would be normal again. You'll never get Dart to go back, not while the Neptunians are in control. Maybe Lizzie can make them go. She's strong enough to force them. It's worth trying. Even if the Neptunians saw her walking around, they'd think she belonged to them. Lizzie, I want you to find Dart, Slim, and Husky. What do I do when I have found them? Bring them back to the Gallosphere. If they refuse, knock them out. I will obey your instructions. Oh, Lizzie, if any Neptunians try to stop you, knock them out, too. I hope it works. So do I. Return to the Gallosphere. I only obey my master. You will obey me. The temperature is falling. I must increase it. What was happening? I'll call Lizzie. No, don't interrupt her. Shall I find out what Lizzie's doing now? No, Colonel. If you ask her any questions, you'll stop her from working. Wait a bit longer. It's not warm enough in here. Are you sure you gave our slaves the correct instructions? Yes, Excellency. But I will instruct them again. Most strange. I cannot communicate with the Earthmen. Go and see what has happened. The three spacemen are here, but they are unconscious. I had to knock them out. Never mind that. What am I doing here? I must return to Tyro's palace. Dart, this is Rayburn. You must obey me. I only obey Tyro. Let me pass. Lizzie. Stop Dart and his men from leaving the Gallosphere. Yes, Colonel. And switch on the electromagnetic field. That will make them normal again. I won't let you touch this switch. The Earth slaves have gone. See if they are in the Gallosphere. Yes, Excellency. And this time, I will destroy their robot. You will need a special gun for that. Let me out. Colonel, 
What shall I do? Turn on the magnetic switch. Don't come near me. Let me out. Knock them unconscious again, Lizzie, and turn on that switch. I do not know which switch to operate. Try them all. How will I know when I have found the right one? When the electromagnetic field is on, all sonar beam communication stops, and no thought impulses can enter the galosphere. That means I will not be able to obey you. Never mind that. As soon as Dodd and his men are normal, tell them what has happened. Now, try the rest of the switches. Keep trying. Good. The magnetic field is on. Where? Where am I? Dot? Husky? What's wrong with them? You were hypnotized by the Neptunians and taken away, but I brought you back. I am not hypnotized now. The magnetic field is on. Thank goodness for that. We must take off immediately. So Lizzie had knocked us out. Well, no wonder my head aches. It is better to have an aching head than to be a slave. It's safe to turn off the magnetic field now. Galosphere 347 calling Earth. Thank goodness you're safe. Come home at once. Very well. Oh, uh, Colonel, we'd like to have Busy Lizzie as a member of our crew. I'm afraid you can't. Haggerty made her so that she could work for me. I'm surprised at you, Colonel. You're no better than the Neptunians. What do you mean? You also like having a slave. Why, you... <laughs>